Hi everyone, welcome to Cup Idiom Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm the Sail Canada Cruising Instructor, and in today's video, we'll be talking about prop walk, how to deal with it, and how to make it work for you. Welcome to episode 29, Dealing with Prop Walk. This video is an excerpt of our full 12 part online Master the Art of Docking course, available on our website. I have included a link in the description below. And now, let's get started. For a lot of boaters, Prop Walk makes them feel like this the boat seems to have a mind of its own and won't go where it's pointed. For those that get it, it can feel like this and can be a useful tool. Prop walk is neither good or bad. It is simply one of the forces acting on the boat that needs to be understood and managed. That is my goal for this video, to get you to understand prop walk and then to think about how to use it to your advantage. So what exactly is prop walk? Prop walk happens when you first engage reverse but have not yet reached sufficient speed for the rudder to steer. Think of the propeller as a sideways paddle wheel. The propeller will pull the back of the boat to the side. A right hand propeller will pull or walk to port in reverse. This means that when you first engage reverse and the propeller starts turning, the stern of the boat will be pulled to port as the boat begins to move. Prop walk to port is by far the most common and will be assumed for all the examples in this video. Prop walk goes away as soon as the boat has reached enough speed for the rudder to respond. This is called steerage way. Steerage way will vary from boat to boat and will also be affected by such things as wind and current. A left hand propeller will walk to starboard. If your boat has a left hand propeller, it's just a matter of adapting the techniques described in this video to your particular boat. In this animation, notice that the rudder is over to starboard yet the stern pulls to port as the boat backs up. But once sufficient speed is reached for the rudder to be effective, the prop walk disappears. If your boat has stubborn prop walk, one trick that can be effective is to reverse with a burst of speed to get the boat moving and then switch to neutral. The momentum of the boat will allow the rudder to steer without being overcome by the prop walk. As I mentioned earlier, prop walk will vary from boat to boat. My boat will overcome prop walk quite quickly with my rudder hard over to starboard. For some boats, however, it is best to start reversing with your rudder centered, since turning the rudder before you back up could act as a brake and may not allow the boat to get up to steerage way quickly enough. This is called a sail drive, and they are becoming more popular with new boats. It is important to know if your boat has a sail drive, since the prop walk for sail drives is typically less or sometimes non-existent. The further back the propeller is situated, the stronger the effect of prop walk. So you can see from these two examples that the boat in the top picture with a conventional shaft and propeller, the propeller is much further back than the boat in the bottom picture equipped with a sail drive. Full keel boats such as this are particularly problematic to back up. The long keel and relatively small rudder make steering in reverse difficult and since the propeller is located so far aft, the effect of prop walk can be great. Skeg hung rudders such as this are a bit better than a full keel boat but will not steer as effectively in reverse as a modern spade rudder. The vast majority of sailboats cruising today have a spade rudder. Now let's take a look at prop walk in action with a running commentary from the helm. I want to demonstrate a little bit of uh, reversing and dealing with prop walk and oversteering. So right now the helm is centered. I'm going to shift my transmission into reverse. And as I shift into reverse, if you look at the bow sway, we'll notice that the bow will gently start to swing to the right. That means the prop walk is taking my stern over 
into port. If I take on this boat a quarter turn of wheel and then wait, I've got lots of room behind me. Standing sideways, looking forward, looking back, holding a firm grip on the wheel. So we've still got prop walk taking over. I am steering to starboard. You can see how long it takes to overcome the prop walk. If I wanted to go full stop, I could do that. It would react faster as soon as we get up to steerage way. The problem once we do that is that we can then start to run into oversteering problems because of that front end skidding out. So I'm going to over uh, exaggerate it so that you can see what I mean. So right now full right rudder. I'm going to come back to center, come back to midships. You can see how much that bow sways off. And if I go full left rudder and give it a moment, it will pick up. But again, you can see how fast that bow is swinging off. And so when I bring it back to middle again, it takes some time for that skidding. And that skidding is due to the lack of lateral resistance from the keel forward. I'm going to slow down now. For these conditions, don't have to go real fast. If I'm steering into the wind, don't have to go as fast. So we're always adapting our speed to the conditions. For me, once I've overcome my prop walk and I'm steering, I try to go about a quarter turn of the helm and give it some time. The main thing is when you come back to center, try to anticipate because it will oversteer and then let it come back. Like anything, it takes practice. Definitely a skill worth practicing. Can come in very, very, very handy. In this aerial shot, I pull the bow in tight to the dock, which sticks my stern out in anticipation of prop walk to port as I pull out of the slip. The effect is subtle, but you can see how the bow drifts away from the dock as the stern pulls to port. Once the boat reaches steerage way, here, the prop walk is no longer a factor. Now that you know what prop walk is and how it affects your boat, let's talk about some strategies to mitigate it or even use it in your favor. As you saw in the previous clip, I turned the boat at the dock in anticipation. The same can be done when switching from forward to reverse. The boat will carry its way forward for some time after you've shifted into reverse. Keep in mind, that as much as the prop is spinning in reverse, the boat is still moving forward. So you can use that last bit of momentum to turn opposite to the direction of the prop walk as the boat slows and stops. Then, as you begin to back up, the prop walk will straighten you out and you should be on course as you reach steerage way. One scenario in particular where prop walk can cause a lot of problems is when entering an unfamiliar marina. You might find yourself at the end of a long fairway with no slips available. Now you have to back out, and if you don't account for prop walk, this can happen. I have seen this situation cause more than a few sailors a lot of grief. Add some wind into the mix, and it makes for a very difficult situation. There are two possible ways of dealing with this. First, you can drive in, and then, as I described earlier, after shifting into reverse, Turn the boat to offset the prop walk as it's coming to a stop, and then back out. Or, and in my opinion, a better idea, is to back in from well outside, where you have time to get the boat up to steerage way. Then, if you get to the end and there are no available slips, it's simply a matter of driving straight out. Here's an example. As I reach the end of the fairway, I simply shift into forward, and with prop wash against the rudder, I have instant steering, and I simply drive straight out. Incidentally, prop walk happens in forwards too, but is only felt in reverse due to the prop wash over the rudder which enhances steering. 
So that's the mitigation of PropWalk. Now, let's look at a couple of ways of using PropWalk to advantage in close quarters maneuvering situations. By using a combination of thrust and prop walk, the boat can be turned around in its own length. In this example, I have my helm turned to starboard and it will stay there throughout the duration of the maneuver. I alternate between bursts of forward and reverse. In forward, the thrust of the prop wash hitting the rudder kicks the stern to port. In reverse, prop walk pulls the stern to port. It is important to not let the boat start moving backwards or forwards. You are simply using prop wash and prop walk to turn the boat around. The effect is subtle and will only work in one direction. And if there is wind, the wind will either help you turn more tightly or, if coming from the wrong direction, will prevent you from using this technique at all. Speaking of wind and how it helps or hinders, in this very specific scenario, it's possible for the boat to side slip with minimal fore and aft movement. By using wind on the starboard bow, propeller thrust against the rudder, and prop walk to port. It is an unusual situation, but makes for a great practice exercise. And in the end, once you understand how prop walk affects your boat, get out and practice as much as you can. As I said, prop walk is neither good nor bad. It's simply one of the factors that you need to understand and deal with. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you next time when I talk about how to read nautical charts. Thanks for watching, until then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.